Today I'm reviewing the extremely interesting Fujifilm Instax Mini 26. The Instax Mini 26 is an instant film camera and is probably the least expensive camera in the Instax line. Now instant camera tech isn't exactly new technology. In fact, the first instant cameras were invented and sold as early as the 1950s. Over the last few years though, instant cameras have made a rather quirky comeback, mainly thanks to Fuji's Instax line of cameras. And just like all of Fujifilm, other Instax cameras, the Mini 26 has an almost cartoonish exterior. It almost looks like something Dora the Explorer would use to take a picture. It's currently available in four colors, pink, blue, white, and black. I'll leave links to all the different colors below in case you're looking to buy one. The unit I'm testing today is blue. Built into the front of that chunky plastic body is a fixed 60 millimeter lens, and to the right of that is the extremely important flash. On the back of the camera is a large compartment into which you load the cartridge of film. Each cartridge allows you to print 10 photos, and you don't want to open up this compartment till you're done taking all 10 pictures. If you do open it up, you'll end up damaging all the remaining photos. They do currently provide a single cartridge with the camera, which can get you started with 10 pictures. They also provide two 3 volt lithium batteries that live behind this compartment above the film. To the left of that is the viewfinder. Now most people who've only taken pictures on a smartphone might not be familiar with the concept of an optical viewfinder. This is what you have to look through with one eye to frame your shot. And what's important to remember is that unlike your smartphone, the camera has no autofocus. So you have to focus by physically moving forward and backwards till the image in the viewfinder is sharp. It will take some getting used to and you will struggle a bit in the beginning, but you will get the hang of it. I guess that's why Fuji includes film for the first 10 pictures. Right under the viewfinder is the red button to turn on and turn off the camera. To the left of that is a small LCD screen which shows the number of photos left in the film cartridge, the camera mode and the lighten or darken command. Now there are three distinct modes in the camera, auto mode where there's nothing displayed on the screen the flash mode where the flash symbol is seen and the landscape mode. Auto mode is what you'll use mostly for general shooting. The flash mode is for low light shots and the landscape mode is for shooting distant expansive shots. You can adjust the camera modes using the mode button to the left of the screen. There's another button to the left of this one. This allows you to lighten or darken the image. So for example, if you take a picture and find that it's either too dark or too light, you can hit the lighten or darken button and retake the same picture to get a better result. Now taking pictures with the Mini 26 is actually pretty simple. Turn on the camera and the lens extends. Look through the viewfinder and make sure your subject is correctly framed and is in focus. When you're ready, hit the shutter button, which is on the top edge. The camera takes the picture and a picture prints out of a slot on the left hand edge. The picture will initially be completely white and it'll seem as if the camera didn't take the picture. Wait a few minutes and suddenly the image begins to appear and it becomes much clearer and more saturated over the next few minutes. So what kind of pictures does it take? Well, for starters, the pictures are about three and a half inches by two inches in size, including the frame. The picture itself only measures two inches by one point 0.75 inches. The entire thing is about roughly the size of a credit card and will fit in your wallet. All my test pictures were taken using film with a white border. Fuji sells film with all kinds of borders. You can get anything from a black border to borders with specialized prints and this really does add to the charm and artistic effect of the picture. The film is kind of pricey though. In the US prices range from about 50 cents per photo to two dollars per photo depending on what kind of border you pick. I'll leave links to film with different kinds of borders in the description below. When it comes to photo quality, the camera isn't exactly spectacular. It will take decent pictures with some practice, and if you pick a border to match, you could actually take some artsy and aesthetically pleasing pictures. Most of these pictures were taken using the auto mode. One thing that's both interesting and annoying is that each of these photos are completely unique. You can never take two identical photos. This does add to its appeal, but it is also kind of annoying if you're looking to share it with more than one person. Fuji does also provide a close-up lens attachment, which attaches to the front of the lens, and this lets you take close-up pictures like this one. And something that most people are probably dying to ask is, does it take a selfie? The answer is yes. You can use this tiny little selfie mirror next to the lens to frame your shot and take artistic and uh, sometimes not so artistic selfies. So should you get the Instax Mini 26? It's important to understand first that the Instax Mini 26 is 
not a serious camera, and honestly, it doesn't pretend to be. With its chunky, cartoonish design and quirky colors, it isn't meant to be a serious piece of photographic equipment. However, what it does do well is produce these cute, artistic, unique pictures that are actually quite fun to take. It's great for kids' birthday parties or even parties in general, and you could even take cute, quirky pictures for a scrapbook or school project. It's a cute, quirky looking camera that actually does what it's intended to do. Definitely worth the investment. I'll leave a link to all the different colors of this camera below in case you're looking to buy one. If this review was useful, please give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe for more reviews, unboxings, and how-to videos. Thanks for watching and see you next time.